Hello everybody, in this video I'll be painting uh, Daughters of Cain Blood Sister. Uh, it's going to be a pretty long video, the model tended to be quite a lot of work, so be prepared for that. Um, as usual I start off with uh, a Kales Black undercoat from a spray can. The first coat I apply is a mixture of two parts black and one part black grey, and once that's dry, this is followed by a wash of long oil. Just cover all the scales with it. And once that's dry, I take black grey and I carefully roughly paint in all the scales. I'm not super precise in this uh, stage because there's uh, there's some time to keep up. Next I take dark flesh tone and I am going to paint the hairs with it. Also I'm going to paint the red scales with it. I just block everything in completely, uh, especially for the scales, this gives a good idea how the finished product will look. So it's convenient to do this early on. Next I make a mixture of one part desert yellow and one part khaki and I paint in the, the belly of the snake part of the model. Once that's dry I make a mixture of one part strong toe and three parts red toe and I wash the belly of the snake and also I wash all the red parts with this. In this manner I get um, a clear outlining on the belly. Uh, all those deeper recesses will, uh, will shift in color and you get the recesses will become uh, visible nicely. I also do this to the, on the hairs, obviously. Uh, I wanted to make them the same color as the scales, the red scales. Then I make a mixture of four parts black gray and one part gold gray, and I start highlighting all the scales one by one. This is quite a lot of work and takes quite some time. In this stage, I also clean up and. Um, fully paint the scales that I missed on the previous layer. Then I add one part gold grey to this mixture and I carefully try and highlight all the scales a little bit. Um, I do this um, the most upper one on the upside and then the one below on the bottom and the third one goes on the upside again and the lowest one goes on the upside as well. Then I add one part white to this mixture and I repeat this process with thinner lines. Um, on a really small scale this is nearly impossible so don't uh, worry too much. Next I went and made a glaze out of Gilliman blue and one part with a little bit of uh, non-oil mixed into it as you can see here. And then I added a couple of drops of glaze medium to it to nicely uh, thin it down and I apply that over the scales to get a little bit of a blue hint into it. Next I went back to the red parts and I made a mixture of one part dark flesh tone and two parts quarry red and I apply a highlight to all these parts. Make sure I make sure I don't uh, go into the recesses and just slowly build up that red color. Once that has been applied, let's try. I make a new mixture of one part dark flesh tone and four parts gory red. And I'm going to repeat this process. 
strengthening the colors uh, towards the light if you keep the hairs uh, apart like I did. Uh, make sure you hold it in a position uh, that's the same as, it, as how it will be on the model. As for the scales, I just applied it in, uh, in this case as a, as a thick edge highlight actually. Just leaving the recesses uh, well visible and the previous layers as well. Once that's done, I take pure gory red and I go and reinforce all the red tones. Basically, it's the same procedure as the previous step, only just a smaller area, making sure there's a little bit of a transition. And as you can see, I kind of like to hit areas several times. Um, this makes the one layer a little bit more powerful, so that it starts to, uh, to pop a bit more. Next I make a mixture of one part gory red and one part bloody red. And I paint in small highlights on the most upper parts of the red parts. Again, uh, on the scales, especially the bigger ones on the back, I just applied this, this as an edge highlight. And as a last coat, uh, pure bloody red has been applied in the same manner. On the hairs, on the lower hairs, I uh, do paint the most outer points as well, as you can see here. This just gives a little bit more contrast over the, over the entire model in the end. And on the scales, this is now applied as a, just a really thin edge highlight. Next, I made a mixture of four colors. Um, it consists of uh, three parts desert yellow, three parts khaki, and three parts red tone, with one part dead white added into it. And I roughly highlight the belly of the snake. The red tone is purely to, uh, to make this color a little bit more fleshy. Otherwise the color would be too pale and uh, the red wash uh, would give an give a ugly effect. Then I add one part dead white to this mixture and I start reinforcing the previous highlight. I then again added uh, that white, this time two parts, and I started building up the edge highlights on the model, and also uh, just going with the shape of the model to decide where the where the highlights go to be. And 
And as a final coat, I added three, three more parts to that white to this mixture and repeated this process. And as you can see, I uh, keep doing this a couple of times over. Uh, this makes painting a little bit of a transition easier. I now glued on the upper body of the model, uh, so I could start working on that. Uh, I started off with the skin, and I made a mixture of one part dark flesh tone and two parts L skin tone, and I just blocked in all the skin uh, on the upper body of the model. Once that's dry, I took right hand flesh shade. And I washed the entire model, but um, I didn't apply a very thick wash. Um, you don't want this to pull on the entire model. It's just to give a little bit of the, of the wash effect. And, uh, that's enough. I then made a mixture of one part dark flesh tone and four parts elf skin tone. And I applied the highlights to all the skin. Leaving the recesses untouched and since this is a first highlight you don't need to be super careful to uh, have painted everything as long as you stay out of the recesses you're okay by adding two parts spill flesh I now start reinforcing those highlights and cleaning up on parts where there should have been a highlight but I didn't paint it previous stage. And as a last highlight skin, I added two more parts pale flesh to the mixture. And I reinforced this previous highlight. Staying mostly on the upside of the model. So that if you uh, look from it from the top, uh, you can see those highlight areas. Next, I made a thin glaze out of Carver Crimson, as you can see here. I use some glaze medium and I mix in a little bit of the Carver Crimson. And I apply this to the skin. Uh, the little hint of red uh, makes uh, skin come to life more. With, for example, a, a blue wash, um, it would become more cold and more dead like. But since it's an elfish figure, figure I, want, I don't want that look. Then I took black and I started painted in, painting in these belts. Uh, the one on the waist, I later on decided I wanted it to be another color. So in the end of the video, I'll be changing that. Then I made a mixture of four parts black, one part cold grey and one part earth. And I applied uh, rough highlights to all these belts and uh, yeah, the straps and stuff that's going on on the model. For the next highlight, I added one part cold grey and one part earth. And I repeated this process. Just once again I made sure I didn't completely paint over the previous layers. So that a little bit of a transition starts to appear. Next I added 
one part stonewall gray and one part khaki and I started reinforcing these highlights especially on all the edges and on stuff like belts I like to do them on both the up and uh, bottom side of the belt I then added two parts, two more parts stonewall gray and two more parts khaki to this mixture and I start reinforcing these edge highlights. And to finish them off I added two parts white to this mixture and on the most visible parts I applied a thin line of this paint as you can see I try and stick to the upside of the model the same way uh, we did with the skin I then went on to the metal part and I made a mixture of one part black metal and four parts emerald elk and I painted uh, the chest armor and the bow this color then I used old copper to block in all the golden parts on the model And once the old copper was dry, I used a wash of agro earth shade on golden parts. Be careful to not spill over on the skin. Using Coelia green shade, I then washed the other metal parts. It's a uh, when washing in this manner, when you next to an already painted area, it's always wise to have a separate brush at the ready. Uh, so if you spill it over, you can quickly absorb it with that. Next, I took dwarven gold and I painted an highlight on all the golden areas. Then using silver, I apply a really thin edge highlight to all these golden areas, but um, only on the most visible parts and parts that are sticking out, so that there's uh, this nice uh, shine it starts to appear. Then using pure emerald elk, I apply the highlights to all the metallic parts. I made sure I didn't hit uh, the recesses once again to leave the green shade in place there and create a transition in this manner. Next I made a mixture of four parts emerald alchemy and one part white alchemy and I reinforced these highlights. I mainly stick to the upper parts of the, of the, of the metal parts. Only on the bow the, there's two snake heads I, and some ribs beneath them. I painted those and I painted this uh, little 
rim on the bottom of the chest armor. Next I added one part silver to this mixture to make it a bit more metal like and more shiny. And to the outer edges I apply a thin highlight with this. Uh, on the chest it itself uh, you can uh, carefully dry brush, wet brush it on a bit. I, accident I accidentally went into the recesses and uh, I cleaned that up with the, just uh, putting a little bit of Coelia green shade in there. Next I took Seraphim Sepia and I washed all the golden parts with it. And in this manner that uh, hard silver edge highlight turns to a more gold like color and it warms up the gold a little bit. I attached the hair to the model, uh, which I shouldn't have done in hindsight because I was going to repaint the belt on the model, but okay. And using scurvy green. I painted a little dragon thingy on the arm. Next using khaki, I block in the belly of the little dragon. I believe it's called the blood worm, but if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Please correct me. Then using wolf grey, uh, I paint, paint uh, the inside of the wings of the the little blood worm thingy. With a base color applied to the entire little creature, I gave the entire thing a wash with Quillier Green Shade. Next I made a mixture of six parts curvy green and one part stonewall grey and I started applying highlights to the greenish parts on the, on the dragon thing. I'll just call it Bloodworm from here on if I'm wrong, I'm sorry for that. I make sure I leave a little bit of the shading visible. And uh, once this first highlights dry, I add one part stone wall grey to the mixture and I start reinforcing the green tone. I just built this color up towards the most outer sides of this uh, little model. Next I add one part white grey to this mixture and I repeat the process of uh, building up this color. But once again I leave a little bit of the previous layers visible. So a little bit of the transition uh, comes onto the model. I add another part of white grey. And I continue this process. And as you can see, it's uh, every every time it's a smaller area I paint. Next, uh, using pure khaki, I repaint the the belly of the bloodworm leaving the recesses untouched. And then I make a mixture of uh, one part khaki and one part bone. And I try and apply a highlight on the middle of these uh, small segments on the belly. And then I add one part dead white and I try and reinforce this color a little bit. Um, this is so small, it's really hard. I think I, I'm using a triple zero brush here. And still I'm... Well, it's okay for a tabletop model. But, uh, I think it could have been done better. Then I took Wolf Grey. And I start repainting the... 
the inside of the wings. Again, leaving the recesses untouched. I'm just going to build up this color a little bit from here on. And the next highlight will be one part wool gray and one part white gray. Next, I add one part dead white to this picture. There it is. And I carefully reinforce these highlights, making sure I leave little bits visible on the previous layers. And now the model is nearly done. I needed to paint in this little letter thing, so I start off with a base color of dark brown. And uh, I also applied this color to the belt on the waist of the model. The black grayish uh, color didn't work next to those uh, gray scales. So once that has been applied I make a mixture of one part dark brown and one part earth. And I apply a rough highlights to all these uh, brown parts. This is then followed by a wash of aqua grid shade. This uh, gives a nice deep shading and it ties those previous two colors uh, together nicely. Whilst that's drying, I took white and I painted in the eyes. Also, the eye on the the eyes on the blood were, uh, were painted white. And next, using black and paint in the pupil in these eyes. Um, on the model, I didn't do the blood work. Uh, these are the white is painted in a horizontal line, and the black is painted in a vertical line. It takes a bit of practice, but um, it makes painting eyes really easy actually. Next, using lavender yellow, I, in a couple of coats, I glazed the eyes on the blood worm to make it a, have a yellow appearance. Then back to the brown parts. I made the same mixture as before, one part dark brown and one part earth, and I apply an edge highlight all over the, these belts. Like I mentioned before, I do this on the upside and on the bottom side of the belt, as you can see here. And as a last little coat, I apply a final highlight to this of pure earth. just on the most visible parts and the outer parts. After this I uh, finished up the base and uh, gave, the dull, gave the model a dull coat and added some tufts and this is the end result. I had quite a good time painting this model. It took quite a long time as well. Um, I never count hours but uh, I imagine this took around 6 hours to paint so it's quite a lot of time. Um, so I hope you liked this video, uh, like, share, subscribe if you want to, uh, leave a comment if you want to, uh, especially if you think I should improve something, let me know. And um, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.